I just got the DaVinci Resolve 18 uh, public beta and I was looking through and messing with uh, just seeing what was different and one of the things I found um, is this cool thing uh, let me look it up here called depth mapping um, which I'm gonna be honest because I updated um, I saw a couple videos of this this morning and uh, a couple guys trying it out and I was like oh man let's let's give it a shot so here you see a very funny uh, still from a film that's me in a in a robe um, from a horror movie that I'm, I'm making that should come out this year um, so I wanted to try this depth mapping where basically what it does is it kind of takes what's in the foreground and the background and splits it apart so you can make adjustments instead of having to track and mask the object you can just it it basically the 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 technology does it for you um, so look I haven't I haven't done this yet so I just I've seen a couple videos and guys messing with it and I just wanted to try it myself. So this is my first time doing it. I wanted you guys to be there with me when I did it. So, you know, here I'm gonna, you can just add it right to the node, um, which does that. Or I've also seen this where you just drop it right onto, you just drop it right onto the timeline. Um, so that way in the first one, you know, so let's say, Let's put command D. So let's go here and do a little color real quick. Let's just say we want to go. I like to use the HDR wheels. I just find them a little bit more fun. Uh, let's darken the shadows a bit. Let's go a little bit more into the light with it. I want it to be like you can't make out the detail of the figure there. Let's crank the light up to get that contrast a little bit. Okay, then speaking of contrast, let's bring that up a little. By the way, I'm using the M1 Max, uh, MacBook Pro 16, So, and I'm screen recording. So this is working very well, no lagging while I'm doing that. Um, so, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I also, for the depth mapping, let's turn that back on. I want to make it, so the idea is you don't have to use a power window, right? But you see here, the issue I'm going to have with this is that this box is coming in as well. So let's go over here. Let's go faster. Uh, I'm going to do, if you do adjust map levels, now you can kind of control it a little bit more. So if it's really, really white, that's good. That means it's separating, you know, what you wanted to separate. So we want to make the background as black as possible. Let's make it really kind of, and these levers, I mean, I'm still learning. So you just kind of adjust till you get where you want to get, you know? So you see that box up there is going to be a problem. Here's some ice, and then I want to go to isolation. Let's get it to where it's, you know, you want it, as, like I said, as white as possible. It tells you you're really getting it. There we go. And then you can finesse it. So, you know, you want some uh, little bit of edging. You want to blur the edges a little bit. Very similar to a power window. But, but again, this is doing all of the work for you. So it's really doing the whole thing. And then what we want to do is once we get it where we want to go. So what I might have to do eventually, I won't do it right now, but is do a power window on this just right here to block that out so that it, I tell it we're just focusing on this. But still, that is so much easier than having to track, draw the window, and do the whole thing, try to you know finesse it. it. It did all the work for me. So, you know, it's not perfect, but again, the dark figure is kind of pushed back and it's still separating it from from the background. I mean, look at that almost perfectly. So this is amazing. Then we want to add another node. We want to link the two of them. OK, so then we're going to go here, come back. We want to get rid of the preview. So now we know it's done it. So we're going to go here. Preview's gone, so now you see it down here. And let's make some adjustments. Let's have some fun. Again, I've never done this before with this, this particular depth mapping. So let's see what we can do. So I really want to make the figure super dark, right? So we just said we really want to just crank it down. Look at that. It's doing the box too up there. You see that? See the box? 
which is okay. Again, I just could use a power window and map that out, but oh man, like we want to turn the light like all the way down in there. That gets rid of all these lines right here. And you know, eventually what you really wanted to do, take the global down. I mean, honestly, that kind of ends up just looking like a shadow. And then at the end of all this, you do your, you know, for me in film, you do your output blanking. And really that just kind of looks like a, I wouldn't leave it like that, but you know, just. And then the outside of it, you know, we already color corrected, color graded. You know, we could turn the contrast up and then look at that. So that's me messing with the contrast and the HDR really kind of makes that background a little more menacing pop a little bit, especially this cage and all of that. We can take the light down a little bit. Make it not so let's even go over to the highlights because it looks like, yeah, we've got that that light is really let's bring that down a little bit. Oh, yeah. OK. OK. So you see what the depth mapping does. I mean, it isolated, unfortunately, with this shot because it was also at an angle. So this portion is a little closer to camera um, than the rest of this. So it chose this, which is perfectly fine. And then uh, it, because this was a little closer to camera, I guess it assumed this was, you know, foreground too. And then all the rest was background, which is okay. You know, like I said, this is not a hard fix, but that was easy. If I wasn't talking through all of this, I could have done that in good Lord, no time, no time at all. And then you do your other stuff, you know, add your film grain, all of that, but yeah, so I mean, again, I'm just getting into this DaVinci Resolve 18, but this depth mapping, uh, that's kind of a game changer because the quickness that this will allow you to get an image and then let's see if it tracks it well. Oh yeah. So again, you're seeing this flicker up here. That's the image, that's the depth mapping. So what I would do is I'd slap a, let's see if I can do it real quick. So depth mapping, we're just going to put. Oh, it won't let you do a power window. Let's see if I can do it here. Ah, there we go. OK, so you have to do it in the second serial node. OK, see, you learn. Boom. A little bit there. I don't want to track it. I just want it to stay there because, ah, there we go. So see now, that's, I think that's shadow right there. I think that's shadow right there of the figure. Nope, it's not. So let's go back here. See, this is fun now. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Here we go. Let's see if that helped. There you go. Boom. So we've used the depth mapping. I put a power window. You bring a serial node and then connect it brought a power window to that area to block out what it caught over here. I mean, that, I mean, seriously, if I wasn't talking, this whole clip would have taken me absolutely no time. Uh, look how goofy my hood was on right there. Oh my gosh. I have better takes of this, but I just wanted to use this. But there you go, guys. So this is me, MacBook M1 uh, Max with uh, DaVinci Resolve 18, the beta, using depth mapping. I mean, this is pretty cool. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next video.